Welcome Facebook friends. Just coming to you with a quick video about the difference between flower essences and essential oils. In my animal energy certification training program and just in general in life, I notice that there are a lot of people confusing the two and there is a huge difference between flower essences and essential oils. So I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about essential oils, and many of you are familiar with them. Um, there are a lot of multi-level marketing companies that are um, pushing them really hard, and I have um, been involved with Young Living since the early 90s. Um, I'm no longer a distributor, but I certainly have a, more than a hiking box, a hiking shoe box full of oils. So, and I use them quite a bit. Um, and I've done lots and lots of training in essential oils um, with many, many experts in the field, including Gary Young. And, you know, I know that there's people who like one of the companies and not the other, and I, I don't have any, um, I'm not partial to any company or anything like that. I just want to give you the facts. So essential oils are amazing. I use them myself regularly. Um, all essential oils have some sort of healing property, um, you know, of some sort, like they have some sort of healing property. But um, I got a little puppy here, so I think I better grab her. She's being a little um, maniac, two pound, two pound uh, puppy, which is wild. <laughs> um, who is wild, I should say. Anyhow, um, so essential oils, I'm, I'm, and the, one of the reasons I wanna talk about this is because most of my followers are animal lovers, and essential oils are all, not all safe to use on all animals. So I really recommend, if you're going to use essential oils with animals, you have it cleared by a veterinarian. A essential oils have naturally occurring chemicals, and I've had people in some of my trainings going, there's no chemicals in essential oils, and I'm like, um, if you don't know that there's no chemicals in essential oils, you probably should not be using them. Um, there's hydrocarbons, there's oxygenated compounds, there's terpenes, there's esters, there's all kinds of things. There's phenols, and those are just a few of them. And they all have fairly strong um, interactions in the body. So you, and, they, and, and most essential oils need to be cleared through the liver. So cats particularly can be very sensitive to oils, rabbits, birds, you know, you've all heard of the canary in a coal mine. In the old days, they actually used to send canaries into a coal mine to see if the canary could survive, because if the canary survived, then that meant it would probably be safe for humans, because canaries are much, birds are much more sensitive in general. So I love essential oils, I use them, I've done raindrop therapies on horses, I've had amazing results with the essential oils, but I think it's really important that you have the proper training and know exactly what you're using. Don't just listen to something somebody tells you. Research it for yourself. Do this, study these chemical constituents of the oils. When I trained with Gary Young for four days in Toronto, the first two and a half days were sitting at a desk learning about the chemical constituents in oils. So in my um, training programs, I do not include um, you know, the use of essential oils on a physical level. We do send them energetically and radionically um, only because I can't take liability because I, our training is so c comprehensive that I don't have time to add the training in for the essential oils as well. And I don't think I'm the expert to do that even though I have lots and lots of training. So another thing that I just wanna point out is when you have a lot of training, you still may not be the expert. And that's something that's important for us to know you know, I have enough training to know that there's a lot more to know about essential oils. So on the other hand, and they often, so often get confused with flower essences. Essential oils have a fragrance and they are literally the blood of a plant. You know, they, they, for rose oil, they actually squeeze rose petals and it takes something like 10,000 pounds of rose petals to make, you know, a tiny amount of, of rose essential oil. Um, sometimes it's um, different, for different essential oils, they're processed slightly differently. They're not always squeezed out of petals. And then the second, um, the, so the other piece I wanna talk about is flower essences. Flower essences have absolutely no fragrance. Okay, unless someone has added an essential oil to a flower essence, which has happened. And I use sprays all the time. You know, I have a spray here um, that I like to use. I won't spray it on top of my glasses, but 
that is a um, is a spray that has essential it has flower essences in it so um, so what I want to say is that flower essences were invented in the 1930s by dr. Edward Bach many of you have heard of the Bach flower remedies or at least rescue remedy those were all invented back then and since then there has been incarnation after incarnation of amazing flower essences you know on the market flower essences are basically the energetic or vibrational frequency of flowers captured in water with a very very minimal preservative oftentimes the commercial ones are made with vodka we make our line with shiso which is a Japanese vegetable which preserves it they need to have a certain amount of pres preservatives in them of some sort to keep them stable and to keep them from you know growing fungus or whatever so you know they were designed to help ease all of the all of the emotional kind of mental situations that we don't want and bring about more of the ones we do want calm peace um, I should have given some to my pixie rose look at her cute little face she doesn't she keeps putting her head down so you can't see her eyes and her hair is just almost at that um, almost at that level where you she I'm gonna be able to pull it back soon so you know they they the essential oil I mean the flower essences sorry I'm getting confused myself just in talking here so think of flower essences have no fragrance and they have no impact no they, there's been no negative um, consequences from using flower essences that are documented since the 1930s essential oils have have they they're, they're chemically um, you know they're, they're chemically made they're I mean not chemically made but they have naturally occurring chemicals so they are going to impact the physical body unlike flower essences which flower essences work on the on the vibrational body on the emotional mental spiritual level so um, so I just want people to be aware and be careful um, of what it is that you are, you know, using with your animal companions, if you're a practitioner, what you're recommending to other animal companions. I think just to be on the safe side, you should always have, um, you know, confirmation from a veterinarian. For example, I've heard that oregano oil can kill cats. Cats don't have the same uh, way of processing chemicals through their liver as dogs do and horses do. So, you know, you're probably safer with horses because they're a lot bigger and the smaller the animal, the more careful you should be. And then also based on species, but always use um, essential oils based on recommendations from a veterinarian who is familiar with them. Not all veterinarians know about essential oils because it's not part of their study, but if, you, if you're dealing with a holistic veterinarian or a veterinarian who's chosen to study the oils, they, can, they have the, the bigger picture. They understand the, the medical consequences. Whereas essential oil, I mean, flower essences are completely safe. Um, and we find that, um, you know, imbalances start on the outer areas of our aura in the spiritual, you know mental emotional and then work their way into the physical level so if we work you know in our aura clearing out the imbalances that are that are in that field we can then um, you know prevent them from moving to the physical and I have seen physical issues um, helped with essential oil and with flower essences sorry both essential oils and flower essences but I want to be clear that even though they're energetic and vibrational they can help us on that physical level sometimes I mean we can't guarantee that's going to happen for sure but um, so I just wanted to make this very clear and um, if you like this um, information that I'm sharing this is a little departure from what I've been sharing recently please do share it it helps um, it helps spread the awareness for others on um, keeping healthy happy animal companions and if you have any interest I because I'm such so passionate about this I have created an animal energy certification training program which is really in-depth I've had a lot of people go through it who have had some really amazing benefits and Pixie Rose and I are going to sign off show them your face baby come on there <laughs> I have to pin her down for a second she's too she's too busy she's teething right now so she's not the happiest camper in the world um, got lots of bones for her and lots of chewy things um, so anyways I'll be back with some more videos please share this if you have any if you'd like to um, oh and one other thing I should mention we have a um, free webinar tomorrow evening at 
5 p.m. Pacific. And if you have any interest in joining us, you, I'll, I'll make sure there's a link under this post somewhere. Um, or you can always email clientcare at lynnmckenzie.com. Have a happy Tuesday, and I will see you in the next video. Abundant blessings, everyone.